Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sorry that Elizabeth can't be here, but you've got the booby prize. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to tell you, uh, uh, first of all, please, about Elizabeth's book, which is absolutely wonderful. It's Dowsing, the ultimate guide for the 21st century. And um, uh, Elizabeth describes our experiments together at my laboratory, and it, they were absolutely stunning. And I'm not going to steal her thunder by describing it too much. Just to tell you that I was fascinated as a, as a scientist that when she was dowsing, she just wasn't connecting with energies within herself. She was actually connecting with the environment. And I do believe by some of the spiritual presences that occurred, uh, that she was also in connection with a cosmic force. And what I've decided to do today is show you some of those invisible cosmic universal forces with your permission. And it starts with you uh, and life itself. The uh, question I would put to you is, are we just uh, a collection of molecules and atoms that come together for a short time, from our brains uh, emerges consciousness, which is really to, to science an illusion, and once uh, uh, this vehicle uh, has ended, uh, it dissolves back into uh, its elemental form, and we, as personalities, do not continue. Our consciousness is lost. Well, I hope nearly all of you would say, no, this is not the case. I don't have any evidence, maybe, but I feel within myself and what I've known in life, this is not the case. Well, I want to go a long way today to prove to you that it's not the case, that consciousness continues. And, uh, well, without further ado, I'd like to, to start with that. And it started, um, and my work began in the uh, early 1970s with something called Curlian photography. And um, you saw some Curlian images earlier, uh, before um, uh, lunchtime. And it's depicted in my first book, The Dark Side of the Brain, co-authored with Roger Coglehill. This is also f uh, a book that uh, followed in the later 80s, early 90s, and by Jane and Grant Solomon on my work in this research. It's been going on now more than 35 years. Yes, ladies, I started as a schoolboy. Yes. <laughs> that was the question in your minds, of course. I don't think. Uh, this is some of the uh, literature that's been published. Uh, um, as um, Raymond said, I'm just giving you a taster today. OK. It's just the tips of the iceberg. I can't do it justice in what's left 27 minutes and three seconds. Two seconds. I'd better get moving. Uh, <laughs> um, I was asking um, um, our gentleman from Singapore about uh, uh, crystals and gemstones and the purpose. Well, I have detected not only healing energies from gemstones and crystals, which are very ancient uh, things indeed. They've taken thousands, millions of years to form. But we are also can have connections with them from the very earth to the fact that we can hold them in our hands. And we've also been able to make music from them. Um, my partner, Evie, who is also a classic music musician, uh, was um, in a, shall we say, a little bit of a negative environment. She's in here. This process was photographed with one of my inventions called PIP. And it's now in its newest form to show you, which is new energy vision called NEV. OK? And here, we have her in a very uh, sort of uh, um, depressed state due to some tooth problems. But after playing the crystal sounds to her, look how her and her environment... I do have uh, a thing here. I think that can... Ah, I have. Well, look at the environment around her. The lines of force, those flowing energies. Sounds familiar to some people here? Practitioners here? OK. And here, how those lines and colours like from a, uh, what's spoken in ancient India, have changed, they're heightened, okay? Um, here we have actually the actual movement of sound. Now, that looks like a mandala, okay, a moving mandala, and that's not coincidental. This is done on something called the cymoscope. My colleague, research colleague, uh, John Reed, makes sound visible. I'll say that again slowly, because it is so profound. It makes sound visible with his research. And here we have the moving energies within the sound. There's a sound and it's, 
is actually transcribed to visual form. And we're using our um, technology to, to, to uh, contrast it even further. <clears throat> now, curling photography, there we are, started in 1972. Was it that long ago? Yes, it was. Um, I remember in America, a young lady chasing me after a lecture and saying, uh, could you sign the, the book, please, uh, Dr. Hoff? And are you uh, uh, Dr. Oldfield senior or junior? I said, why do you ask? She said, well, my mother says by this time, uh, uh, Dr. Oldfield senior must be dead. He's been in this work so long, and you must be his son. <laughs> no, I am the real McCoy. Rumours of my death <laughs> have been greatly exaggerated, especially in places like New York and, and, and places like that. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, please don't apologise. I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> American cousins and our, our, our brothers and sisters from all over the world come to conferences like this. And it's so great to have you here. It's just the English sense of humour. Eventually, you Americans will get used to it, I'm sure. <laughs> I always say when I visit America, I'll be out by the 4th of July. I promise. <laughs> OK, now here... Yeah, I hope there's no uh, London constabulary in the audience like the Met. But this is my fingerprint with the energy around it in some of my early Curlian pictures. Now, aha. Now, you've heard of people with ghosts and the long leap gallery with the grey lady. Well, it doesn't just happen with people. It happens with plants as well. They have their etheric remnant, their, their uh, pranic uh, equivalent. And here we have a, a, a Canadian maple leaf Okay, and from that part onwards, there's a cut, and from there onwards, there is no physical leaf. It's just the phantom of the leaf. And we did this with whole plants. Here we have a uh, potato uh, leaf, organically grown, I have to, uh, that's the secret, organically grown. And when stripping the leaves off, you have the phantom remaining. Only lasts for a few seconds. You've got to be very quick with curling photography. And I wasn't always quick enough. Here we have, uh, oh yes, many gardeners here I hope, yeah? Uh, cabbage white caterpillar, not a friend of the gardener, the organic gardener. The uh, reason I'm saying that, I'm blacking its history for what I did with it next. Um, <laughs> after a painless injection of potassium cyanide, <laughs> I also do children's parties and weddings by the way. <laughs> Bookings with Jonathan, okay, afterwards. And, <laughs> Instantly, the light, the prana, the chi, has gone, okay, at the moment of death with the creature. And this is the before and after. Before, surrounded with life force, because it's been eating my organic cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> and then, a little punishment with the injection of potassium cyanide. Now, this is my organic cabbage, grown many years ago. Beautiful. It's not the sky at night with Patrick Moore. It's my organic cabbage with Curly and showing you all the energy. Uh, that's after overcooking it in a pressure cooker, you know, so you can denature even good energy by the wrong circumstances. Uh, no, not uh, two, uh, two suns side by side in some distant galaxy, but uh, organically grown oranges. And this is where they physically are, the oranges, and that's the energy field around them. And if that orange is uh, preserved, cooked, or uh, uh, changed in some way, the energy field collapses. Um, organic garlic, often used in many oriental cookings, and here too now, I'm not forgetting France and Spain, of course. And here we have this, uh, uh, the clover garlic with this wonderful effervescent energy it gives off. Okay, this is something I, I, I progress from curling photography to three dimensional scanning of this energy field around the body and around uh, certain things. But I was also studying healers, and I brought together. Uh, gemstones and crystals that had healing properties, thanks to Bhatt uh, Dr. Bhattacharya here, uh, his book Gem Therapy, Firma Indian Press, uh, Calcutta, uh, which put me on the road of combining gemstones and crystals with electromagnetic fields, which I've done here in this tube. Notice the colour uh, spread here, okay, for healing in people with rick necks, arthritis, rheumatism, uh, many different things over the years. And here we have my son, two and a half years old, with his own um, box uh, and his own crystals. You know, he's fallen over, cried, and played, whatever, uh, came home. Daddy, you know, I've got, right, get your box. From the, he used to keep it in his toy box with his precious toys. Bring it on. Put it on his head, put it on his knee. 
Daddy, why can't I be like an ordinary boy? Well, how, what's an ordinary boy like? I said, they, they get cow poll and things like that to take when they got, got pain. I said, well, you're not an ordinary boy, you're daddy's boy. And then <laughs> one does what's best with children. And then one day, uh, at five years old, he, he had been asked uh, uh, by the teacher, what do your fathers and mothers do for a living? What did you say? I told him, I told them, Daddy, that you were a great scientist. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> you can imagine. But, he said then, if I told them uh, you'd work with crystals and gemstones, you were an electro-crystal therapist, they would have thought I was completely mad, Dad. <laughs> Wisdom, eh? Yes, from children. Anyway, polycontrast interference photography came just before 1987. And this is where I wanted to look at the energy, not in two dimensions like curling photography, but in three dimensions, and not just around people, but in the environment itself. We are living, ladies and gentlemen, in a sea of cosmic energy. And you yourselves are affecting that cosmic energy. It's not just affecting you. You have a direct uh, effect on it. And here we have uh, a beautiful uh, 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 dog called Venus. And she was, um, I was visiting the Monroe Institute in America and uh, doing some studies there with Dr. Uh, Brian Daly. And here, uh, she had hip dysplasia, that's what I diagnosed. And this is using light interference pattern. Morier fringes and things, if you remember, uh, in interference, but we're doing this 